Yeah, uh, yeah. I actually have a lot of bear stories because I play poker with one every Thursday. Oh, oh. I actually, um, my cousin grew up at a local woodland zoo, oh, really? and they had bears there. So one of the things I used to do is um, go up there and play with the bear cubs oh. because you know they're cute and cuddly, and all the people that ran it like let it run around. So sure. I'd hang around on a trampoline. Wait, wait, wait. So you got to pet bear cub? Yeah. Jealous. Its name was Earl, and it would suck on your thumb and make the cutest noises, and... And then rip your face off. I was going to say, until it's an 800-pound killing yes, machine. Yes, they do get big, but um, <laughs> it was a good time. I like, like woodland animals. you got to love them. Hello, and welcome to Monroe Live. We are doing our continuing our Charger Teardown. And my fellow grizzled uh, comp compatriot here is Julian Ates. I'm Antonio Dono, and we're about to tear down the Grizzly E. So we have two different models here today. Uh, the Grizzly, uh, I believe the Classic, and then the Avalanche Edition. Uh, more or less, they're identical on the inside. Some subtle differences that we'll go into. And then we'll be comparing these to the previous uh, Tesla V3 charger and the top don that we've uh, done previously so uh, we'll go ahead and start off with opening up the grizzly classic so from the faceplate, there's a very minimal uh, decoration going on here there's a single led indicator as opposed to what we've seen previously where there are multiple uh, ways for charging status to be indicated the enclosure itself is uh, fairly simple we have some external uh, labeling for different warnings um, UL certification. <clears throat> Bear with us, please. Uh, so as you just saw, the lid itself comes off relatively easily once these four lengthy fasteners are removed. On the inside, you can see that the uh, light guide itself is actually injection molded, uh, what we would believe to be a PMMA uh, or polymethyl methacrylate. Uh, this is typically used in uh, automotive applications for light guides for your interior mood lighting. Uh, there's a small injection molded nut on the inside and then that just slides out. So instead of having a PCBA mounted LED like we saw with some of the others, this actually extends down to the PCBA to have the light transmitted through this injection molded piece to reach the faceplate. So with the lid removed, Antonio, do you want to talk a little bit about what we're seeing uh, just inside the box here? Sure. Um, this is the smart version. So we have the Wi-Fi card up here. There is a small uh, external adapter. So if someone wanted to plug in, do some diagnostics, they could do that. We have a dip switch over here, um, large relays, and a voltage sensor. But aside from that, that's about it. A lot of the circuitry is running through this um, integrated pad, which is using the layers of the PCBA um, to present different paths that are available for the circuits, electricity to travel through in the circuits. We did check and confirm that these are lead free, so that is a good bonus, even though it doesn't say so on the boards. So the assembly itself, uh, you PCBA simply lifts right out of the enclosure. Uh, as Antonio just showed, there's not really much to the backside of this, and if you look at the enclosure itself, there's really not a whole lot in here. There are some uh, studs sticking up with some injection molded stanchions to space the PCBA away from the enclosure. The enclosure itself uh, actually has some uh, branding and part number information on the inside. This is a Hammond enclosure. Uh, this is a die cast aluminum and similar enclosures to this. Uh, this has been slightly modified, but similar enclosures uh, of this exact same part number uh, typically retail for somewhere around $80. Um, so this, compared to the others, does not use a custom-made enclosure. Instead, it is an off-the-shelf component with some minor modifications made for the specific application here. Uh, in terms of the PCBA, uh, one of the immediate things that we see compared to the Grizzly Avalanche Edition, which does not have Wi-Fi capability, is you can see in the upper right-hand corner of these two boards, all things essentially being held equal, there is a lack of the Wi-Fi card uh, there. Uh, another interesting thing to note is that the dip switches, which are located here and here, 
on the Avalanche PCBA without a Wi-Fi card, this very last dip switch is in a different position than we see it in on the classic Wi-Fi enabled. This effectively allows uh, anybody assembling the board to turn on or off this section of the PCBA so that there is no real estate uh, that's being wasted for a uh, card that's not attached to this board. Um, Antonio, what were some of the other uh, things that we saw when we were going through and we had our electrical team take a look at these two boards with us? So the uh, main other factor is the presence of actual fuses. So as opposed to integrated protections, these um, are easy to remove. If they blow out, you have to have someone either service it or sort of open it up and service it yourself. I'm not sure if that does anything to the warranty, but um, it is a physical fuse as opposed to electronic um, safety. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from that, these are using the uh, standard connectors, which we do prefer. Just uh, slip these in, put the bolt in, and you have your connection. And yeah, to that point, I actually did want to uh, discuss as well the installation of the terminals to the line one ground and line two. As Antonio just pointed out, uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is very similar to what we saw with the Tesla charger. Uh, we actually, right here for comparison, can show the same section of the cable that came from the top down charger. And just visibly, it's very clear to see uh, that there's an, a very simplistic approach here, and there's a lot more going on uh, with what we saw in the top don. Uh, all of this extra componentry makes installation a lot more difficult, as we elaborated on before. Uh, this, however, is able to fit uh, right in through the holes in the enclosure and then be sealed with a uh, similar sealing uh, nut that we saw on the top don charger. So in terms of disassembly, it was incredibly easy. We were very surprised uh, by the simplicity of it, especially compared to the Tesla, which we uh, consider to be relatively straightforward. Comparably. Comparably, right. Um, so one of the things that we would give kudos to Grizzly for is in both of these uh, designs, uh, it's incredibly simplistic. Uh, four fasteners need to be removed and the PCBA can effectively be uh, lifted out. Uh, the Tesla obviously had a few more components, um, but this was uh, actually really, really nice uh, in terms of taking, taking apart. Right. I would say it was one of the, it was an unexpected thing to find that it was simpler than the Tesla on assembly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We generally see that Tesla has fairly streamlined executions in their uh, automotive work. Uh, we clearly saw that in their charger design. Uh, so seeing somebody that's uh, found a way to make it a little more simplistic and make the assembly and disassembly easier is always a treat. So and the thing is, because the Grizzly company does focus on electronic circuitry and boards and mm -hmm. um, ACAS systems, mm -hmm. they were able probably to design their board and keep it simple, whereas right. the top done looks like a purchased or mm -hmm. pre-made board, which was a lot more complicated. Yeah. So whenever you're able to control those factors, you can simplify that a lot, and they've taken it to the extreme. Right. Um, it's a little bit lower tech with the um, hard-mounted fuses, but it's still simple. Right. And with hard-mounted fuses, that also does open up the possibility of serviceability in the event that there is some sort of an overcurrent event, uh, something surges in the board. Uh, the others did not have any of these fuses, so we're curious if uh, whether or not there's maybe some anticipation of their needing to be serviced, uh, but that could just be an additional safety feature implemented by Grizzly. The Grizzly the circuit board weighed in at about 0.35 um, kilograms, so it's the lightest board out of all of them. The housing came in at 2.62, so that's probably the, this is the heaviest housing. The cable, which is substantial, comes in at 5.6 kilos, so a total of 8.56 kilos, about 16 to 17 pounds, plus 0.01 if you add in the smart chip for the one. So um, yeah, honestly, not a whole lot to talk about, which in itself should be a compliment to Grizzly, uh, yes. obviously with Tesla. There was a lot to go off of because we wanted that to be our baseline. Topped on, uh, there's some complexity driven by um, uh, lack of uh, ground up Vert design. Yeah, no, no vertical integration on that. Right, so uh, this it's a great compliment that we honestly don't have that much to talk about for uh, both of these chargers. Um, so that about wraps it up for the uh, 
Grizzly, unless Antonio, I think, was there anything else that we wanted to touch on before we wrap up? Nope, I can't believe it, but that's it. Okay. Well, then, uh, yeah, that does it, and uh, we'll be back next time with another Charger Teardown, so stay tuned.